Hey guys, CB Zoomer. Today I'm going to show you how to make realistic reflections. And if you stick around to the end, I actually have a free tool for you that does it all for you. Let's go ahead and jump into Fusion. Here we are inside of Fusion. I'm going to take this media in and I'm just going to drop it over here on the left. If you don't see two viewers, it's the button over here. I'm going to start bringing in a couple nodes just to help me start building out this reflection. First thing I'm going to bring in is a transform node. Now the transform node is right here on the toolbar. So you can either grab this and just drag it down or you can hit shift space to bring up the quick tool select type in XF and that will also bring in a transform node. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is hold down the option key and I'm just gonna create a pipe router. Now, if you haven't used a pipe router before, they're really handy. They just allow you to branch out and connect to other nodes. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the output and drive it right into this transform. Now I'm gonna take this transform and drop this transform into this top viewer, just so I'm looking at the actual things that I'm working on. And then this original will be in the left because I'm using this original image sort of as my reference image so I can see exactly how blurry I need these reflections to be. And that's gonna give us our realistic looking reflection. So I'm gonna take this transform output. I'm gonna grab this gray box and I'm going to drop it on the output of the pipe router. What that's going to do is that's going to merge this transformed version of the video on top of our original version of the video. All right, so let's take the merge node. We're going to drop it in this viewer, go back to the transform and I want to flip it. So there's two flips here. We have the horizontal flip, which we don't want to use. And then we have the vertical flip on the right, which we do want to use. And that's just going to flip it vertically so that we can actually start to build the actual reflection that will be underneath the original image. Now let's come over to the merge node. I want you to left click on the merge node and then click on this rectangle mask. It's gonna automatically start to mask it. And then I'm just gonna drag the rectangle mask just a little bit lower so it's out of the way. And then I'm going to increase the width and increase the height. And then I'm gonna grab the actual transform handle of it and I'm gonna bring it down until it matches the specific point that I actually want to be my horizon or whatever my reflection line is gonna be. So that's gonna be our reflection line. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the transform again. And now I need to start bringing that flipped image down until it matches the horizon line. So something like that, you can see we have a really cool looking reflection. And this is an easy way to get a stylized reflection, which could be really cool. And of course you can use this for lots of different applications, but we're going for a realistic looking reflection. So this is not going to work for us because it's an exact mirror of our original image. In fact, there is a tool inside of the edit tab that will mirror things. And so you don't have to do all of this if all you wanted to do is mirror it. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the merge node. Instead of the apply mode normal, change it to overlay because I want anything that is brighter than 50% gray and anything that is darker than 50% gray to be superimposed on top of my original image. Now this looks really cool, but again, it's not super realistic. We can see these buildings almost as well as we can see the actual real buildings, which looks really cool. And if that's what you're going for, then that's how you do it. But we're not gonna finish there. We're actually going to blur this out. So after the transform node, shift space to bring up the quick tool select and then type in blur. Now there's of course a ton of different blurs so you can choose whichever blur you want to go with. I'm just going to use the regular blur node. So hit add. Now the blur size slider is what's going to give us that actual blurring effect. So I'm going to use this as my reference image and I'm going to blur it until it looks very similar. Now you might be saying well why did you do all of that? Well we created our own reflection so if I was to bring in something like a text node and I'm going to go ahead and plug the text node in the same way that we plugged in all this stuff you'll see that the text is now now being reflected and we know our reflections match our original reflection. You can even add things like displacement nodes in order to get like a watery looking effect on top of this. So let me show you how to do that real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and shift space, type in the word displace. I want regular displace node, go ahead and hit add. And then I need something to actually drive the displacement. So I'm going to bring in a fast noise and I'm going to take this fast noise. I'm going to drive it into the displace. You'll see that it's already doing something. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn the contrast up just a little bit. Contrast is going to probably control the amount of displacement for you inside of the fast noise. You can also give it a little bit of seethe rate. And what that's just going to do, if we look at the actual fast noise and see that it just animates it, play with the scale in order to get the right amount of displacement for your image. So that's probably too much. But you can see if you were to say, give it more seethe rate, you can see how it actually moves over time and it animates. 
So you would definitely take a little bit of time to play around with it and to get it to look exactly the way that you want. Again, we're going for realistic, so I'm not gonna use this right now, but I just wanted to show you how to do it if that is something that you're trying to do for your effect. All right, so that's pretty much it for doing that actual effect. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all this because I wanna show you an even easier way to do it. So I made a tool for you guys, it's absolutely free. If you're interested in it, you can go over to cbsuper.com, pick up this reflection tool, it's the very first tool. You can buy me coffee if you want, it's really not necessary. Uh, I appreciate everybody who has already bought me coffees. It's, uh, I drink a lot of coffee. You, so um, so that's the CB reflection tool of course there's a ton of other free tools that are on here if you're interested in order to load this tool up all you have to do is click on that it will download and then the easiest way to do this I've found is just to come into effects library tools over to macros and then just click on the show folder for your macros hopefully yours will come up it hasn't been working for me lately so there's another way to do it you can also come over here to LUTs and with LUTs selected you can go ahead and show folder and then you're just going to come over to macros and you're going to take that dot settings file and just drop it right in there. I've already got it set in there. I just literally just drag and dropped it and then you can click off of it and you don't even have to reset your computer or you don't have to reset the program. It's already in there. And now all you have to do is shift space, type in CBR for CB reflection, drop it. And then let's go ahead and load it up here. We can already see that it's doing something, but you have to move this around just a little bit. You can take the little cursor here and move your reflection where it needs to go. And then you can just take this edge of the line and you bring it down. That's your mask controller. All you got to do is line it up. And just like we did in the last one, I'm going to come over to the reflection mode, change it from normal to overlay and ta-da, it's done. You can add a little bit of blur mount if you want to make it very realistic to look just like the blur looked but you also have a reflection blend and by default, I have it set to 50%. So it's only gonna show 50% of that reflection. You can turn it all the way up if you want. It's totally up to you. And the neat thing about the tool is that you can actually change the color of your reflection if you wanted to give it a little bit more of a stylized look and you can really get crazy with it. It has the displacement, the water displacement uh, built in. So if you are interested, it's still there. Um, by default, I have it turned off. And if you want to turn it on, all you got to do is take this slider, move it over to the right, and then you can, you know, animate it or you can change the actual scale. All your little selections is right here in a little bit easier format. So that's pretty much it. Uh, if you guys like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.